Hao mitaku yepi. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lakota language mini lesson thirty-eight. And we're going to discuss. Uh, shoot, what was that word I wanted to talk about? Ease. I had something on my mind, and then. As soon as I'm ready here to record, and I guess I forgot that word. What was that word? <laughs> the word is aktunja, to be forgetful. <laughs> and I'm gonna put some hyphens in certain areas to help you to learn to pronounce this word because. It can be a little bit tricky because it has to do with the K and T. They're spoken together. When you look at the word "aktunja," the tendency would be to say "aktunja" if you say it in parts, in components. But it's not that way. It's "aktunja," and when you learn to say it like that. It becomes easier, and you're speaking the way Lakota people speak this word. So, really try your best to learn it like that. Aktunja, as I said, means to be forgetful. And let's try saying this word. But I'm gonna go through it in sections, okay? In little components here. So, repeat after me, please. Ah, ktun. One more time, ktun. Don't say katun. There's no sound between that k and the t. It's ktun. One more time, ktun. Very good. Then the last part. Repeat after me, please. Ja. One more time, ja. Very good. When I say a word and I ask you to repeat it after me, please try to say it exactly the same way that I say it, because I'm teaching you where the emphasis is put on the word, where the accent is, and also the music of the language too. So try to say it the same way that I say it. Now let's put this word together. Repeat after me, please. Aktunja. One more time, aktunja. Very good. Many times in Lakota, when you want to really stress a word, if you want to say, "Yeah, it's really this way," there's one syllable that will be repeated, and you see this on the screen. To be really forgetful, yeah, just absent-minded kind of forgetfulness, yeah, which I have no idea how that feels. <laughs> Actually, I'm like that quite a bit, <laughs> but sometimes I forget that I'm like that. <laughs> sometimes I forget that I'm forgetful. <laughs> Off guy. <laughs> okay, the word is aktunktunja, and I have it again separated into components and into compartments, and you see hyphen between the different parts. So let's go through this just like we did with aktunja, and say one part at a time. Repeat after me, please. Ah, ktun. Ktun, ja. Very good. Now let's put this word together. Repeat after me, please. Aktun, ktun, ja. One more time. Aktun, ktun, ja. Very good. Now, if you want to say "I am forgetful," you say "amaktunje." 
This is a conjugation. You're adding one thing to this word. Because look at the words on the screen. Akdunja, to be forgetful. Amakdunje, I am forgetful. The ma in amakdunje is I. And when a word that ends in A is conjugated, that means like adding something to it, then many times that A will turn into an E at the end. So that's why you see a mock You see that? It ends in the E, E sound. Whereas if you just say to be forgetful, you would say ak If you want to say I am forgetful, you say a mock And again, a mock means I am forgetful. The ma is I. So, repeat after me, please. Amak dunje. One more time. Amak dunje. Very good. Now you can also add words like lila in front of it. Lila means really. You could say lila amak dunje, which means I am really forgetful. So, repeat after me, please. Lila amak dunje. One more time. Lila amak dunje. Very good. Or you could say amak dunk dunje. You could say it that way too, because that's to be really forgetful. Amak dunk dunje. That really long version of that word, we just added a ma to it. The ma is I. So, repeat after me, please. Amak dunk dunje. One more time. Amak dunk dunje. Very good. Or we can use the word ichata. This is like incredibly something, yeah? So if you're really absent minded, you can use this. And then this ichata, you say it like this ichata, like that. You really say it slow. You start high and you go low in the sound. Ichata, like that. <laughs> if you're incredibly forgetfully absent minded, you would say Ichat a amak dunk dungje. She not that bad. <laughs> so repeat after me, please. Ichat a amak dunk dungje. One more time. Ichat a amak dunk dungje. Very good. And then if you say you are forgetful, then you say anik dungje. The ni is you. So repeat after me, please. Anik dunje. One more time. Anik dunje. Very good. Okay, now let's change this into a question. And the question would be Are you forgetful? The way you would say this is Anik dunja he. You hear the music? Anik dunja he. Did you notice that I said the A sound at the end of this word? When you are asking questions, usually the A sound, the A, ah, has a tendency to want to be before he, that question mark sound. So instead of saying anik dun je, which is a statement, you would say anik dun ja, because you're going to ask a question. 
So let's try this, okay? Repeat after me, please. Anik dunja he. One more time. Anik dunja he. Very good. Now, in the Lakota language, when you are asking a question, usually men will say "ho" for the question. That's the question mark sound. However. When a man is among close friends or relatives, or the situation is not formal, then he will say "he" at the end of his questions. And women will say "he" all the time in their questions, because they're just friendlier. That's why us guys are. I don't know about us guys sometimes. <laughs> so. That's why, if you run into a situation where somebody says, "All men must say 'whoa' at the end of their questions," this is not Lakota thinking, because in Lakota thinking, there's always going to be exceptions to the rules. When you say something, always has to be this way and this way only. This is dogma, and that kind of thinking you find in church. Catholic Church, especially where it's this way or you go to hell. Yeah, it's the only way is this way. If you don't go this way, then go sit over there. <laughs> Stay away from me. You're evil and must be destroyed. <laughs> I really like saying that. That's from that movie Steel Magnolias. That one lady says that you are evil and must be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> no, so really, men can say "he" when asking questions when they are among friends, relatives, and the situation is informal. And when a man is extending friendship to other people, he will use "he" in his questions. So when you're meeting some guy and he's saying "he" in all his questions, he is extending friendship to you. Some people will say, "Why、wow, he's talking like a woman?" No, he's not. He's extending friendship. Now, if you want to say he's forgetful or she's forgetful, then you would say "he akdunje." He akdunje. The "he" means either he or she, or it. But in this case, it'd be he or she. So repeat after me, please. He akdunje. One more time, he akdunje. Very good. Now, if you want to use a person's name, just substitute that name where the he is located in this short sentence. So, if you want to say George is forgetful, then you would say George akdunje. You don't say he. You take out the he and put George in there instead, so it would be George Akdunje. Repeat after me, please. George Akdunje. One more time. George Akdunje. Very good. And remember, if you want to use any of these conjugations in the question. You end the word with the a sound. So if you want to say, "Is George forgetful?" then you would say, "George akdunja he." Repeat after me, please. George akdunja he. One more time. George akdunja he. Very good. So, this is an expression you can use, and sometimes it can be used in a funny way. You can use this with other people whenever you're in a situation where you forgot something. Now you know how to say it in Lakota. So, with that, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this video. I really, really appreciate it. 
And if you would like to send a special thanks in support of this channel, look at the bottom of this video where the title is, and right under that, where it says like, dislike, and share, right in that area, slide it towards the left, and you will see the symbols change, and then you will see a heart shaped button that says thanks on it. If you would like to click on there to send your thanks of support, I would really appreciate it, as I really do enjoy making these videos and speaking with you and spending some time with you. And all I ask is that you take the time to think about the message and come up with your own ideas. So again, thank you very much for listening. To learn more about Lakota language, I have written a Lakota language book called Chante et Owoglake, Speaking from the Heart. And all my Lakota language videos are based on this book. This book costs 119 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. And to learn more about Lakota spirituality, I have written a book called Wichocha Otehike. This book also includes Lakota star knowledge information. All the videos that I make, which are about Lakota spirituality, Lakota star knowledge, and cultural information, are based on this book. This book costs 99 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. I also teach online, and I give spiritual consultations as well. If you are interested in any of my services and products, you can send payment via PayPal to my email address, which is hechaka7 at yahoo.com. That's H E H A. K A, the number seven, at yahoo.com. When you send your payment, please include your shipping address and your email address. Ho, oh, Lila Pilamaello. Thank you very much. And I will catch you in the next video. In the Lakota way, everything is circular. As a result, we do not have a word for goodbye in the Lakota language. And so instead we say until next time, which in Lakota is Doksha Ake.